The Nether, a dangerous but necessary visit on any path through Minecraft Hardcore. This barren wasteland of fire and brimstone can spell your death with faster flowing lava and several different species of pigs, all of which who do not want you in their world. I had ventured through here before, but in this new journey, I had still yet to truly brave its fiery depths, but I needed to visit through for essential resources in my goal to finish the game. Little did I know the dangers that would be awaiting me. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no! But that is not where this story starts. We have quite a few other things to talk about before we get there, so let's rewind the clock and start at the beginning. See, I told you these videos would be coming out a lot faster, but could you do me a quick favor before the story actually begins? Only about 5% of you are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy these videos and you wanna see more of my story in hardcore Minecraft, why don't you do me a huge favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It'll help out the channel in our effort to dominate YouTube. But it's time to get into the video. The next dream back, after completing our first 100 days in the world, it was time to get to work. Having just recently fully completed my enchanting room, I crafted a new sword to hopefully get some better enchants and a new pickaxe to be able to do the same, as well as continued capturing any zombie piglins who walk through the portal into boats. I'm gonna build an army. Let's just say this stream started well. Oh, it has knockback. Ooh, okay, okay, I like this. I used a couple books to burn off some unfavorable enchantments and just store off a couple before combining my bow to get power three on breaking three really early in the game. That's a huge come up. But there was still work to be done around the base as I continued to walk around. The animals were starting to get a little bit too crowded and I didn't want to die by getting yeeted by a bunch of animals into a fence. So I split them out into several larger pens so I'd have a little space to make my way inside. Two escapees, not for long. Please just do me a favor. One, don't talk about that mixed axe Welcome. swing. I want to see no comments about it down in the comment section. And then two, don't call jungle PETA on me either. That's just not okay. I quickly headed over to the skeleton grinder, which was now a lot more functional due to a piece of ice that we had garnered from a wandering trader who gave me that and two leads. And then headed back over to my base to combine my pickaxes fully repairing it. I really need to work on mending, but my villager trading hall just isn't ready quite yet. But with that in my pockets and most of my gear enchanted and ready to go, it was time for something that I had been dreading for a while. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, it makes me nervous. Let's do it. I stepped through the portal and returned to the fiery hellscape that had finished my first run in Minecraft Hardcore. Turned off nether fog. So now we can all see. There's a bastion over there. Heck no. I am nervous. I could always get a saddle and go riding one of those around instead. I'm trying to find a fortress. I want nothing to do with bastions right now. Even though I know brutes should be visible. No way. <laughs> yes. There's the blaze spawner right there. So it turns out when you can see in the nether, there's actually a lot of really cool things around. First priority though, was to make sure I didn't fall down this death pit and died to fall damage or falling in lava or, or fall damage and then falling in lava. And then I started tunneling through the mountain to hopefully get me a little bit closer to that nether fortress. Some lava blocked the way, but I was thankfully able to block it off and then make my way to hit off the source block while continuing my progress through. Efficiency five on netherrack is almost as satisfying as a sword on a field of bamboo. Boo. I exited right on the border of a crimson forest, making sure to keep an eye out for hoglins. Them throwing me into the air is still something I'm really nervous about, and started investigating ways to approach the fortress. Responsive for the next like two minutes, okay? I need to go full gamer mode for just a second and make sure that we're gonna come out of this okay, okay? Smartest place to bridge in. Don't look at me like that, okay? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Don't. The floating island and the lack of adequate cover from blazes really has me nervous from this angle of approach, so I wanted to continue other investigations. I went to bop that ghast and, well, I panicked. I just saw that hit a zombie piglin. 
Are they mad at me? Oh no, did that just mad at me? Let's not talk about the fact that I just forget how to speak whenever I get nervous. Thankfully, they were still friendly with me. But this angle of approach to the fortress was basically a non-starter. Without fire resistance potions, which I can't brew until I visit the fortress, I'm too nervous to bridge over lava. We're gonna have to find an alternate route. Nether wart and magma cream. I know, I need nether wart too, which is in there. I need uh, to get potion brewing. I need to hit this fortress. Thankfully, it looked like the land on the other side would let me get there pretty easily. The only problem was I'd have to go through the Crimson Forest, which was full of hoglins. I did have a little bit of gold on me though, so I traded with one of my new piggy friends and put them in a hole, speedrunner style. I uh, just... Nothing will happen to them, don't worry about it. And then fought off a few ghasts while the tradings went through. I did a little bit of shooting into the fortress just for fun and got hit by a blaze, pretty much confirming my theory that this angle of approach is just a bad idea. So it was back through the tunnel, back up into the Soul Sand Valley, and around for an alternate approach. Yeah, I have to go around the really long way. Going through the Crimson Forest is basically warped mushroom to warped mushroom, because that keeps the hoglins far away. I love this mechanic. I realize after this nether run that they actually don't do too much damage and I'm remembering them as worse than they are, but I'm gonna be careful now. Every time I see the, the piglins, I'm like, do you like me? You should like me. You're supposed to like me. I'm wearing your colors. I continued my way through the nether, using cobble to block off several lava flows to open up a more direct route and bridge over small gaps. Arrows was my preferred method of combat for anything that I was hitting. Don't want to accidentally bop a zombie piglin again, and this time have the entire horde get mad at me. But eventually, I made my way through the woods, fought off a gigantic bouncy cube of fire, and I was there. I was at the fortress. While here, I had two primary goals. I needed both blaze rods and nether wart. Continuing my long range battle with the AC-130s of the nether, I made my way down the bridge, getting set on fire by a blaze. The spawner was right in eyesight, so that's gonna be my first priority. No, I know, this this double intersection right here is amazing for Wither Skeleton, for Wither Skeleton Farm. This is really good. I'm also not too well equipped to deal with the wither effect, so I made sure to block off all of the arches to be only too tall, so wither skeletons couldn't follow me through. Since I was a little short on food, I used walls to protect myself from fire and did what I could to grab as many blaze rods as possible. No blaze rod, two kills. <gasps> blaze rod into fire. Acquired. I also don't want to come back to the nether for this foreseeable future, so I spent about 20 minutes right now getting over a dozen blaze rods. I want to be set for a little while. Okay, that's a dozen. That's 12. That's 12. We're out. We're out. We're out. We're done. So excited on the blaze rods and interacting with chat, just going through and having fun slash being stressed while streaming, I immediately departed the fortress with those shiny yellow sticks in my pocket, forgetting my secondary objective, which is something that will come back to bite me later. But the trick back home was uneventful until I realized my mistake. Oh, God. Okay, chat. I think... I think we're good. How long were we in the nether just now? Like an hour? Oh, shit. Why did you wait until I got here before you said now we need nether wart? Why did you wait until I got here for me to, to say it? <laughs> HP! HP, why didn't you say something? <laughs> oh, why? So yeah, I was upset, but I wasn't gonna go immediately back to the nether. I wanna make sure that I'm equally dividing my time through exploration as well as construction. And the next big project for the base was an iron farm. Now, keeping with the general build process that I've been going as with the enchanting room, I'm going for both form and function in this build. So instead of just building it out of stained glass or a really plain box, I'm gonna put a lot of effort into making sure that this looks like something that actually belongs in or around the jungle. This is right on the border of biomes, and I did that so it was just far enough away from my base that I didn't need to worry about villagers wandering their way in where they weren't exactly welcome. And then it'll be lava, and then we'll have the, the hoppers. Nice, so I think that should work. But setting up the water and towering up to the sky gave me just a bit of vertigo. This is about where the farm will actually be. And this process, 
this video doesn't do it justice. This took almost two full streams to do. Do you think we can make that? <laughs> nope, not trying. Okay. I knew that was safe. That still made me clench. While working on all the aesthetics, adding small accents of wood and different colors of stone, I also set up the killing platform with soul campfires so they would do additional damage. Headed off a little bit of ways from my base to desecrate a patch of stone and murder an entire population of squids so I could get cool black stained glass for the front killing chamber to really isolate everything in, and then primarily use that and leaves to decorate the space. Two, like here and here. So it looks, it looks all good. Like we're gonna make sure that this is not only functional, Welcome. but form. Do you, do you, do you? What are you doing this to me? You're bullying me, chat. <laughs> and you wonder why I don't let you gamble. But an iron farm is powered by both a zombie and some villagers. And while the village just over the hill was functional it was also still over the hill and a little bit too far away and only had four villagers in it and we're gonna need a lot more so i started setting up a rudimentary villager breeder taking a few of the fletchers that hadn't yet been locked in as fletchers and carting them away to new and unknown lands putting them inside and safe and turning one of them into a farmer these two will make me infinite villagers given the opportunity but getting them up to the sky is an entirely different animal i replaced and made a gigantic bubble column, building a piece of kelp that was over a hundred blocks tall to be able to fly up to the sky with a single bubble. And then proceeded to, as villagers were exited from the breeding chamber, lock them into beds in the sky to be constantly scared and constructing iron golems to protect them from a zombie, which would then immediately be burned and give me iron ingots. Like I said, evil. Minecraft kind of messed up if you think about it too hard. But since I still don't have sheep at my base, spider silk is the primary way I'm making beds. At least they're going to be comfy for the villager friends. Heading back over to the abandoned mine shaft by my base though, I stumbled across something entirely cursed. Lots of bets on lapis. Lots of bets on Okay, I'm not the only one who sees this, right? That feels broken in some way. Um, we should just leave, leave that, uh, leave that go. Cool, and we're gonna just gonna back away slowly. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why I love doing these videos live? It's because of interactions like this. Somebody asked me about my skin, and I would never put this in a video until I just thought of it. Check this out. Here's a thing that most people don't know about my skin. So this is what you all normally see, right? Uh, bop, 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 bop. I'm Assassin's Creed man. Even all the way to hat. So like this is the cool this is the part of my skin that somebody made me so like i always had that underlying skin that was what i made for myself and then somebody put this on top of it to be like you look like an assassin so i thought uh this would be cool okay. bouncing around and being able to answer questions like that i i enjoy it it's so much fun but with enough silk in hand, I transported another villager up to the area and the platforms that I constructed earlier were already functional. I didn't even spawn the zombie up here yet and I already have a golem, that's awesome. Go. Nope, 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 don't you try to go up here. Okay. Whew. Villager buddy, don't don't try this. But once the final villager was locked into their bed, I threw down a couple buckets of water to send the golems down to the lower part of the apparatus. Okay, first, the first golem's been yeeted and added some leaves just for decorative effect. Axe these and this. So we are almost there. We are almost ready to go. Now I had captured a zombie underneath this base, leaving it dark and had just one spawn. That was extremely useful. Getting it up into the bubble column though, that, that took some work. Perfect. F3B. What I wasn't expecting is as soon as I would break the minecart, the zombie would come and attack me in the sky. All right, well, dang it. <laughs> All right, we try again. 
eventually. Yay. Up you go to your new home. I used the exact same hat and everything for this zombie and made sure to cover my head so this one stayed in place. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So there. Yep. So now every 700 ticks or so, every 700 ticks or so, this zombie will scare the villagers and make a new golem. This is a 99.99976 efficient villager uh, iron golem farm. The next order of business was draining and making my way back down, destroying that entire temporary structure now that everything was in the sky and functional. With a couple hoppers in place, the efficiency of this farm was immediately apparent. This thing has generated three stacks of iron in the last 10-ish or so minutes? Like, that's not bad. I went to bed that night a happy and very rich man. This iron is gonna make me so many emeralds. A few days later in the real world and the next day in Minecraft though, the construction was complete. It was time to resume my quest to complete the game. And that meant it was time to go back to the nether. I just want to be safe actually. Mending, mending, blast prot one. See, I have a lot of protection. No, we're going in with diamond. We're going in full diamond. I'm nowhere near the, um, I'm nowhere near the piglins, so we should be fine. This time, I knew how to get to the fortress, and it was just a matter of heading around. But I also made a pretty critical mistake. Down here, just don't die to fall damage. Don't die to fall damage, Legundo. That is the one thing that if you died to that, the chat would never let you live it down. Not having gold on my person and I not really being in a position to head back to my base to access it, that meant piglins would now attack me on sight. And I didn't have any gold in my pocket to placate them temporarily while I ran off in another direction. This trip through the nether was far more dangerous than the previous. I did clear the crimson forest though and made my way back into the fortress, immediately being set on fire. Oh, it just feels like home. Knowing the general layout of the area, I headed to where Netherwort would potentially spawn and was immediately heartbroken. We only need a couple Netherwort and then we're getting the heck out of here again. Same deal as last time. This bridge just screwed us on that. Because that's another blaze spawner. So there's the two blaze spawners. This is the transition point from interior to exterior. I continued walking around the fortress for another five minutes or so, looking through every single branching path, hoping that somehow the variables would change when I wasn't looking and I'd find the resources that I needed. Turns out that wasn't the case. Now, this might be a bunk fortress for getting nether wart. It might just be a blaze spawner fortress. <laughs> given what we've seen so far. It does not seem promising. And that would be how it ended up. There's no inside to this fortress. It's all exterior bridges and blaze spawners. That'd be great for other farms, but for my goal for today's venture into hell, it wasn't gonna work out. You can get in bastions, that is true, but I am not going to a bastion right now. I do not feel well protected enough, and also I'm not wearing gold. I took out a little bit of my aggression on a few hoglins that had gathered outside of the fortress, pretty safe on my perch, where they just couldn't get to me. After feeling in a good spot and that I had fully explored this area, it was time to head back towards the portal and make my way to safety. I almost got caught by a couple of those hoglins off guard, but I was able to quickly tower my way onto a tree. They're pretty dumb in all actuality. I hate this situation. I really hate this situation. Ooh, he was right behind me. I knew you were coming for me. I knew it. The piglins, however, are a little more dangerous. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. That's a lot, that's a lot to deal with. Surrounded by multiple enemies, good in both melee and range, I started to panic. And worse yet, I had lost my way. Okay, they're all still mad at me. So we're gonna go over this way. Sorry, chat, I am not looking at you right now. Welcome. A little otherwise focused. At this point, my heart was racing, my hands were shaking, and all I wanted to do was to return 
home. Scrambling through the woods, I eventually found a few torches and was able to make my way back up over the hill, through the valley, and into the portal. I had escaped. I'm doing pretty good. Was just a little stressed because I was just getting chased by about a half a dozen piglins. Whew! Ooh, that was terrifying. My foray through another dimension cut short and unsuccessful. I was Welcome. feeling kind of down. So I decided to explore the overworld for a change and go on a little bit of a trip. Let's just head out in a direction and we're just gonna go for a while and see what we find. I know I had said I wanted to keep this world small, but I'm a man of contradictions. I found villages and desert temples and multiple coral reefs, all within a few hundred blocks of the jungle, all easily accessible and usable for builds. Happy Gundo. Oh my god, there's two. There's two. There's right here. Look at this. I even used a ruined nether portal to take a quick jump back into the nether, trying to see if I could get home a little bit faster now that I had put on a golden hat and would feel a little bit more safe. It was over by the nether portal, which is useful. I had forgotten about my tunnel in the moment though and wanted to venture back over the overworld. And I'm so glad that I did. I found another desert temple that had some moderately good loot, a few emeralds and some useful books and guns powder but as i exited the temple jumped back in my boat and sailed on the cool ocean waters far different from the lava i had started today's adventure on i came across something that would change the direction of my playthrough all together and that my friends is a story for another time i hope you all enjoyed the video most of this was recorded live on Twitch. Come say hi. I'm live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday nights starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, sometimes on the weekends too. We've made great progress from what you've seen in this video, and more chapters of this story are already being edited. I'm hoping to get these out pretty quickly for you. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Please comment and let me know what your favorite part of the video was or how nervous you were when I was attacked by all of the piglins. But that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Be good to each other, and I'll see you soon.